Hey guys, I'm Captain Mitchell Duggar from Key West, Florida. I'm down here in Southern California to put together a series of fly casting videos to help some clients of mine. I'm going to be covering everything from the basics to troubleshooting for the more advanced caster. Hope you enjoy. All right, fantastic. So that was pretty good. Your timing on your haul and everything was just fine. One thing that I want you to kind of visualize as you're casting forward and looking is, is seeing that you, your main problem that I'm seeing right now is that your arm is pushing away from your body almost too far out here. It's very difficult for you to keep that rod on plane than coming in here without moving your shoulders. So what you're doing to have a tendency, you're having a tendency to cut in across your body. When you watch that loop, if that loop has an outside in roll to it, a lot of times that's caused by coming out and coming in across your body and that can really get to hurt you. So what I want you to do on this next little session is, and I'm gonna to touch your arm, go ahead and hold on to the rod. As you come back on that back cast, you're gonna you're gonna accelerate this forearm and then you're gonna open up the wrist. And this comes to about right here, okay? You're having a tendency to maybe kind of bring it out a little bit further. Let's keep that thing in a little bit tighter here. As you come forward, you're gonna almost feel like you're gonna push this rod away from your body, okay? That's gonna be the, the motion. Everybody has a tendency to naturally come in across your body as you go like that. So when you're coming back on this shot and this thing stops here, then you're gonna do an extension out. And one thing that you and I had talked about before about the punching is as this elbow drops in, you come to a back cast and that opens up that loop. This is where we wanna see. Stop right here for a second. When you're looking at here, you want your forearm to be almost at a vertical angle here, your wrist slightly elevated. This is fine here because we're doing more of a sidearm cast, so this thing can open up, but you want your forearm straight kind of above your shoulder, okay? The other thing is, is you wanna be careful about rolling your wrist out. If you notice here, if you look down and you see your thumb, that means that you've rolled this rod out. And when you do that, that's where a lot of your tailing loops come from. So you don't necessarily need to be holding just super like that, but you don't want to necessarily look down and see your thumb either, okay? So roll that thing back forward. Once we've come here and stopped on a complete stop on the back cast, now what we want to do is drop this elbow in and we want to go ahead and drive this hand forward. One thing that we're going to talk a lot about is the plane of this rod. And what we're trying to see is, is this hand basically come forward and back at the same height as it comes back and forth. Now, the only way to do that and make it look more natural is with dropping the elbow. You know, you think about like on a locomotive where you have those things moving around where there's those angled elbows down there and that's how it gets it going straight. So that elbow is gonna have to drop down into that shot as you extend it forward. So in this next section, what I want you to do is pretty much keep your back cast like you have been, but as you're going forward, think about almost pushing that rod further away from your body. All right, stop right there. So on your first, now look right here. There's no way for you to get to a back cast if you look here, so bring this arm straight back. If you drop that elbow in, Damn. now you're hitting yourself there, okay? So as this elbow drops down in and this rod opens up, this elbow is now gonna drop down in here and you're gonna extend out away from your body forward there. Go ahead and try that a couple times for me. Good, push away from your body, good. All right, set it down. When you look on this cast, this is actually lined up pretty good off your right hip. That's one way you can tell that you've kind of done it right. But one thing you're still doing is still bringing it out okay. a little bit too far to this side, and you're starting to crack coming across your body, which is pretty good. One thing that I'd recommend, now that you've kind of worked up to a higher level, is go ahead and try to turn your shoulders into this cast a little bit. So step your left foot slightly forward, perfect. Now, where this is gonna become an issue is when you kinda, when you're doing, gonna do that, it's more natural to kinda stand that way on the boat as you're kinda getting that shot. So that way that, you know, your shoulders can kinda square and turn into it. You don't wanna cast with the shoulders, but you wanna be able to drop in and rotate your shoulders into that cast. Where a lot of people are gonna have a problem is when they do that, they're gonna have a tendency to roll in, okay? So just with your left foot forward as you're doing that, remember as you come forward, it's still gonna feel like you're pushing away from your body. But with your left shoulder slightly forward like that, it's gonna make that a little more natural. As that sidearm cast, you can have everything just kind of right out here off your side. And don't be afraid to slightly have your chest almost squared, not quite to the camera, but about like that. Try that for a couple times for me. And remember on that forward cast, don't worry about tight loops, don't worry too much about hauling, but just do a couple, maybe three or four false casts and then set it down. Beautiful. Set it down. 
fantastic, pretty good. But now you can kind of see where that line laid, right? So that line's come in and now that line's almost off of your left side. So basically all that means is that you're still kind of crossing in on the body there. Let's try that a couple more times. Really, you know, as you're kind of seeing off, your, your angle right here is almost directly at or slightly right of that cone. Now granted, you do have a little bit of wind blowing you in there, but it shouldn't affect you that much. Good. One reason that you're having a little bit of a pile up there, and this is a pretty common thing, your right hand is ending on your back cast up in here. Your forward cast is down in here. Wow. So this is something that's really neat that you can see from this angle, is that his back cast is stopping high. As he extends forward on that forward cast, the hand drops down in. And so that creates that rod angle going down like that, which is going to either create a tailing loop or send that fly down into the water. That's bad for a couple different reasons. The first one is, is either the belly of the line is going to hit the water, not allowing that fly to turn over, or it's going to hit so hard that it turns over too hard and spooks the fish. Not only is this bad for presentation, but it's also bad for practice. So really make sure when we're watching on this next little section that you see where the hand stops in the back and where it stops in the forward cast. Go ahead and try that. Good, just fine. A little bit of a pile up there. So on this next one, what I want you to think about is when you're coming forward, you're having a tendency, and you can watch it in the video later, when you come in on this forward cast, you have a tendency to decelerate and to hunch your shoulders up like that. What that basically does is there's no deceleration in a fly cast. There's a constant acceleration to a complete stop. That's where we get our loading and unloading. When you come in on those shots and you come up and you stop kind of cute, a lot of people try to do that, I call it a cute shot, where they kind of, they pinch up like that. When they pinch up hard like that, it causes a tight little loop, but with no line speed at all. And so you don't get any kind of turnover and that's why you're seeing that pile up there. On this next section, what I want you to think about doing is that there's gonna be a punching bag that's gonna be right here in front of you. And it's really important, I want you to punch through that bag with a full extension of the arm. And I want you to do it in a nice and slow manner. I want you to actually do this next section as slow as you think possible and focusing on bringing that hand back. Your back cast and your angles are fine. What we're worried about doing is correcting that rounding come in your body, the top to the bottom as you're going forward and making sure that you're punching through that bag in front of you. Remember, like we talked about before, like in, in a fist fight, okay? It's the same way with this rod. If you're gonna try to knock me out, I'm a big guy. You're not gonna come in and give me a decelerated quick little slap. That's not gonna do anything. You're gonna really need to knock me out. So same way on your fly cast, just like a jab, you're gonna be extending out forward on that jab. That's gonna be your money shot, and that's what's gonna knock somebody out. If you kinda of come in slapping across there, it's only gonna do something but much, you know, upset somebody. So in this next one, I want you to think about the punching bag is out off your right side, and you're gonna extend through and punch through that zone there. Exactly, that's the right angle there. Let me get on this other side of you before you start and go ahead and try that. All right, set it down. On this next little piece, and this is gonna be really important for um, anybody watching this, when you're extending forward, it's really important to remember to follow through with your thumb as you're punching forward. What that's gonna help you do is, is that's gonna help you drive that fly line forward. You have a tendency to sky this line, okay? You have a naturally great side-armed back cast, but then you come to a vertical place up here, okay, as you're going forward. You have a tendency to drive forward with the meat of your hand here instead of punch through that thumb. Let me show you what that looks like real quick. The difference is, is how you're starting and stopping, okay? Your back cast is coming down and out like this, which is fine. That's a fine rod angle and everything. But as you're going forward, you have a tendency to stop it up here high, okay? So as that skies that line, that has more effect on the wind to drift it one way or another, and it's gonna kill your accuracy. What I'm suggesting you do is drive them through with the force through your thumb, okay? So the difference is, is stopping those rod tips out to the side as you extend forward. It's still a sidearm cast. I have this thing punched out to my side, but my, my forward cast, my rear cast, my hands starting and stopping at the same place as I line that thing out. When I bring that thing onto my side, it's lined up off of that right hip, okay? So it's no more force or effort than you're naturally putting in it. The only difference is, is where you're, how you're going forward with that forward cast. Make sure you're feeling it through um, your thumb. 
your forward cast has a tendency to come in and stop like this, okay? So you can see that there's not much natural loop or motion. Your rod tip's not necessarily a bad place, it's just how you got it to that place, okay? And remember, wherever your, your rod stops on the forward cast, it should start stopping that reciprocal in the back there. But what we're trying to do is establish more of a sidearm cast, okay? So that rod stops there and extends forward in a punch. Back, forward. And as I come forward, I'm punching through with that thumb to deliver that fly line in off of that right side. With the thumb. All right, send it. Send it. Beautiful. One of your better ones yet. Is that lined up off your right side? So visually, you can see that now. When you look out there, you know if you're doing something right because the line's going to tell you everything. Did that line lay out straight? Did that line lay out straight off of that right hip? Did it come across my side? You can tell a lot by seeing out there what you're doing right here. That last section too, you did a really good job of keeping your hands on plane, which really helped you out. Really tightened up that loop and brought a lot more speed into it. And you did a good job with following through in that thumb it felt as well. Easier. It should feel easier, exactly. When you're doing this wrong, and especially for you having a tendency to clutch up, you're gonna get tight right back in here and sometimes right on top there, okay? That's pretty common. That either means that you're coming around too far here or you're kind of clutching up on that forward. It should be a lot easier and you shouldn't get that tension in that elbow. This whole thing, and one thing I really wanna work with you on is how fluid this is. When you break it down or you watch somebody that casts, it looks very, very fluid, but there's most certainly right and wrong ways to get it there and you can feel that difference. Try that one more time for me. Send it. Beautiful, great tight loops. Is it lined up off your right side? Fantastic, good. You came into kind of a little bit of a clutch in your body there and that's why that line piled up. This next one, I don't want you to about worry about shooting line at all. All I want you to do is cast as slow as you physically think you can. Doing exactly what we've worked on. Just slow everything down. That's it. Punching out, following through with that thumb, keeping it out off the right side. We're in a fist fight here. Good, go ahead and set it down. How'd that one feel? Really good, better. Less uh, effort and less uh, uh, muscle tension. Good. One thing that works out as a really good trick is if you try to practice casting as slowly as possible. That allows you to take some time and look at some things in your cast. And it also shows you how much power and strength these rods have. A lot of people when they're casting, they don't trust the rod, they don't trust their ability. And that's one of the harder things to teach is having you know, patience and really trusting in the gear that you have. So let me show you an example of somebody that wants to cast as ferociously as possible. You can come in here and get this thing rocking and rolling as absolutely fast as possible. And it's a terrible way to learn, but it, it really does really good line speed. But that's not necessarily what this rod wants to do. You can turn around and do that same shot as aggressive as you want to, or with the same stroke, slowing everything down, you can really see what's happening with that loop and taking it nice and easy. Sometimes it's best just to try to get that thing as slow and as accurate as you can. A lot of people try to put too much force into it. Remember, these rods and reels and line are designed to do the work for you, so you should put less of yourself in there and trust in your gear a little bit more. I really want you to watch your cast. Try to slow down as much as possible. A lot of people try to tell you not to watch your cast, and I think it's really important to watch your cast so you can build that muscle memory, but what you don't want to do is put a bad habit in there. When people have a tendency to watch their cast, they want to watch it with their shoulders, okay? And so now we're creating a problem as you're watching that cast of twisting at the hips and rolling those shoulders around, so that's bad. You should be able to see your entire back cast by simply turning your head. So when you stop on this back cast here, just with a simple twist of your neck, you should be able to see everything that's going on there. You don't want to watch that thing around like this and swing it too far around. So just watch with your chin as you kind of turn around. You don't need to see where the tip is going as much as where that rod angle is starting to kind of work out at. The next thing as you're coming forward, remember we're going to drive forward with our thumb, 
come through here and extend down. You're having a tendency to keep this rod tip up high here. If we're gonna drop this thing into a sidearm cast here, that rod tip should end here because we want that rod tip to be the same distance above the ground in both the forward and the back cast. You're having a tendency to have your back cast drop down to somewhere in here and your forward cast is coming up somewhere way in here. So we're creating kind of a little bad angle and a little bit of sag in there. So work really slow on this next one with the extension of the punch forward of the hand and making sure you're trying to keep those rod angles at the same distance above the grass as you're going back and forth. Go ahead and set it down for me. A good thing to look at in this shot as he's doing this is watch how far that rod tip drops back in the back cast on a couple of those. And also how he kind of swings it around his body. It's just inconsistent with where that back cast is coming in. You want to try to think your back cast is coming back and poking a hole in the sky, not necessarily dropping flat to the earth. So on Lance, we need to work on bringing that rod tip up higher in that back cast and dropping the forward cast down a little bit. You can see how that rod tip tries to arc in there and it's causing him to cross his body and bring it around because he doesn't have confidence in the cast because it's hitting on the front and the back. Poke a hole in the sky, Lance. Much better, see how that rod tip came up? Now the rod tips are a little more even. You drop that one flat in there and you see how sloppy that line gets as it's coming forward. Poke a hole in the sky. That's it. All right, Lance, go ahead and set it down. Are you getting fatigued at all? A little bit. Okay, it's looking like you are a little bit, and let me show you a couple of reasons why. A lot of times when you're picking up that line, as we're looking for in this next shot, you have a tendency when you pick up not having confidence in the rod, so you put too much of yourself in there. And what I mean by that is as you're coming back, you have a tendency to lay this rod in way behind, okay? So you're really swinging for the fences here. When you lay this rod tip flat, we no longer have a load or a bend in the rod. That has nothing to do with the height above the grass or above the water, okay? It has to do with the angle of the rod. When you come back in here and drop this thing flat, we've lost all load in there. So now we're starting from the beginning and it makes it a little bit sloppy as it comes forward. Then you try to overcorrect by bringing that thing around your body. When That's you, when I bring it off the water? Exactly, the when you're bringing it off the water, especially on that when you first lift up off of that, off the water. But just for right now, just for practice, remember when you come back, it's a poking a hole in the sky and delivering that fly forward. So we need to tighten up these rod angles, keeping that thing back. And you can see the height of those rod angles going back and forward, keeping that thing in off of that right side and delivering it down, okay? I want you to go back there and kind of stand behind the camera and I want to show you guys a couple of things. One thing that Lance needs to work on a little bit is his initial pickup and then how the next cache and the sequence kind of work out. Lance has a tendency when he comes back, and especially on the water and even in this grass, to come back with a big ripper that comes back here and lays that rod flat. When we lay that rod flat, we lose a lot of the load in that rod. So coming forward, we're initially gonna just kind of get sloppy as it comes in and not deliver that fly the way that we want it to. So what I suggest, what people think about doing as a visual is come back and poke a hole in the sky. And what I mean by that, is if we come back and we poke a hole in the sky, I'm keeping that rod tip up at a higher angle. And that has to do with the cuteness of the angle, not necessarily the distance above the water. So when I come back at that angle, I'm still keeping a bend or a load in that rod. So that way, as I come forward and deliver that in on my right hip, the rod is loaded and then unloaded again. So what that looks like in real time is coming back, poking a hole in the sky, driving forward with that thumb. I'm in a fist fight here and I'm punching forward. When you come in and cross your body like this, you're now taking that rod off a plane in a different way. It's coming around your body like that. There's no way for me to come back and poke a hole in the sky without coming through my body. So on this angle when we're watching, we want to make sure that this right hand is staying out off the right side of our body. We're poking a hole in the sky, we're delivering that fly forward. Your best, most accurate shot is always lined up off your dominant hip. Now what we can see in that and where that goes wrong is two ways. We either drop that thing flat back on the back, so now we're not doing the poking the hole in the sky, or maybe we do that, but as we come forward and across our body, this is when things start getting sloppy. Most everybody tries to come in here, and as that line kind of shoots and lays to the side, it's not falling over that load of that rod and delivering off of that right side. A 
not bad, but you can see all that line came in at a slight angle and his hand kind of landed in front of his hip and off the side of the hip. Set it down. Fantastic, line is straight, shot ended right off of that hip. All right, Lance, I think I've, I'm seeing one thing that I'd like to kind of address here. We've worked with Lance in the past about crossing his body, which is just a really common uh, problem for a lot of people, and we've eliminated a lot of that issue. But one thing I think you might be having an issue with is when you're coming on your back cast, and we noticed he had a little short shoulder yesterday after doing a little bit of casting. If you come back on this back cast and, and tense this thing up way out to here, I think you're still having a tendency, there's a lot of room for that rod to travel here, even if it doesn't come all the way across your body, you know what I mean? There's still a certain level where we're taking this thing off a plane. And I'd like to try something as an experiment just for a second. Go ahead and turn your shoulder in towards the camera and adjust your feet so it's comfortable. So we're gonna be casting like this, but we're gonna be casting in this direction. And in this cast here, what I want you to do is just think about bringing this arm back, keeping this thing a little bit lower than you had been before with an extension out. When you come into here and you roll that elbow forward, you're gonna get really tight here. On this next one, what I'd like you to do is bring this thing out a little smoother and back down in here. Keep in mind that we gotta still keep with those rod angles, okay? Remember the classic 10 and two. So what we're trying to do is take that kind of from here in front of you and then open that up out in front of you here instead of bringing it up so high. So we're getting a little bit more of a sidearm to it and that might open up your window a little bit because you're tight in the shoulder. I think, and go ahead and turn your shoulder back this way. I think maybe what's happening is you're coming in and you're tight to here and even without crossing your body, you're still crossing in a little bit without coming all the way. So we've corrected a lot of that. What I'd like to try now is just frame out towards the camera there, still casting in the same direction opening this arm out to here and then when you come forward this rod tips this elbow is going to drop in and you're going to come and you're going to extend out that way like that trying to keep that on the plane let's try that just kind of squaring your shoulders to the camera a little bit go and drop it that looked like it felt more comfortable. That looked a lot better. Yeah. In close, up over here is where I get pinched. Out here, it loosens up my muscle. It's not compact up in, and I've always been trying, you know, always try to keep the elbow close. Well, you know, until I'm taught a different technique like you're showing me right now, I would never know that that would feel better because it goes against the standard procedure of trying to keep your and that makes sense if, if, if you're coming back and you're tense in that shoulder your natural move is going to be to kind of oh, drop yeah. everything in like that because you're tensed up like that so if we can open that thing out let's try that one more time but i definitely noticed a difference right off the bat yeah it didn't hurt Lance, you still look, when I'm looking at it, really tight in the shoulder. And let me see something for a second. When you're casting, there still seems to be like you're doing a lot of, and I have to look at it, but a lot of, um, a lot of your cast is pinching back with the shoulder. I think in this cast, when we look at it later, as my arm is extending back and forth, I'm not pinching anywhere in that shoulder. My arm out here is more fluid. It seems that on some of your casts, you have a tendency to come into here and punch forward. So you're bringing that shoulder back. That's causing a little bit of a rock in the rod. And we'll see later, I think that's kind of how you're casting. I'd be interested to see how that looks on film if it's anywhere similar. So just try to extend this arm out. Let's try to open this whole thing out in here as this is going back and forth in a nice sidearm deal. See, I'm just moving that rod back and forth in there like that, and I'm more kind of swinging my arm from those angles that I want it to be. I'm not coming back and pinching up. It seems that you get into here and it just gets tight as hell. So let's see if we can't just kind of get that to open up. Even if you got to kind of get your shoulders into it a little bit, you're doing good enough with your punch right now that I think you can cor correct it. So we're gonna, 
know, because my natural cast, if I have a fish there in front of me, I mean, if I'm watching, like, if I'm casting here, my body, you know, that's my natural stroke. And my shoulders are not quite to the camera, but pretty open like that. So maybe we need to try to open your stroke out, kind of more out here to your side, and try to get rid of some of that shoulder. Let's try that for a second. You know, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Okay, let's try that. This goes against everything that I've ever, you know, been doing because it's moving my arm away, but we've got to compensate for what's really kind of an issue for right. me. You know, and I think, I think that's a good point, you know, to make, especially talking about this deal, is that, you know, you can come out here and learn all the different fundamentals, and I, and I think there's a bunch of different ways that we can cast a fly rod. There's no right or wrong necessarily. Well, there's a wrong way to do it and there's multiple ways to do it right. And I think each individual might need a little bit of correction here or there. You know, you come from a lifetime of doing it your way and we're having a little bit of shoulder issues. So let's see if we can't kind of adapt some different techniques to, to work that out for you. Just a low delivery on that one. Everything else looked really nice. Get that arm straight out behind you as much as you can, as much as your body allows you. Beautiful. Very nice. Set it down. Really nice, Lance. That looked much more controlled. Feels a lot better. It had a little bit of an on-hand win. You got messed up in there in a couple little tailing loops but you immediately seemed a little bit more comfortable oh, with yeah, the scenario. Man. So don't be afraid and, and, and don't let me do anything that hurts you. Hold on to that rod. I think when we're talking about these angles, I think you can get your arm away. This is where I want you to cast here. So it's not in the shoulder. We're just talking about kind of humerus and forearm here. You can extend this thing out. And when you're first starting, like what we do with Jennifer, we want everything nice and compact and we want to be able to replicate it every single time. When you're going from intermediate up to advanced, you watch these guys cast and it's not like anything that you would see beginners start to do. So now we're trying to adapt and come up you know, with ways to solve some of your problems. So I think in this cast, you can, this is the drift, okay? There's a difference between a drift and a creep and we'll go over creep later. You don't creep bad, which is nice. You can drift this arm back, okay? And extend this thing out to here without clutching up that shoulder. The only difference is, is when you open up like that, this rod's gonna, the elbow's gonna have to drop back in, still stays out to your side, and we're gonna have to end on that opposite rod angle. So now we've kind of taken that thing and we've broadened it out here right to the side, and this is probably where your arm needs to stand. Let's try that. Straight arm, beautiful Lance, all the way back buddy. Big arm, big haul, shoot it, shoot it. Lance, let's go ahead and try on this next one just to slow it down a little bit. And we might have to change our angle because this is a pretty stiff breeze yeah, it's and it might, it, it's going to start slow. getting, it's yeah. going to start getting counter productive. I think you can still do it slower than okay. you're doing because what I'm watching back there, whenever you get your game face on, stuff's not going right. You know, if you're, you know, really doing something, that means that you're fighting too many things. So let's just try it as slow as possible, maybe in between gusts of wind. We'll see what that does. And then we'll, you know, maybe kind of take a different, take a different tack on the wind. That's it, buddy. Slow her down. Beautiful loops. Perfect. One of the most difficult things that a fly fisherman needs to learn is the double haul. And most everything that we do in practicing is always in a field, out on a boat, out on the water somewhere. And there's very few times that we can do anything off the water that helps us in our fly casting. And what I'm going to show Lance today is something I invented called double haul yoga. For Lance's, he is an intermediate fly caster to advanced fly caster. And this is going to be a great technique from anybody that's kind of in that intermediate phase, looking to kind of, you know, get their game up a little bit. 
it looks goofy. Don't do it around anybody. Unfortunately, we're in a park full of people and that's just one of what we're gonna do today, okay? The important thing about this is make sure that you do all the motions really methodically. And what this does is eventually makes it smoother once we integrate a rod into it. So with double haul yoga, I'm gonna be doing it left-handed so I can stand right next to Lance and kind of walk him through it. Lance, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with a forward fly cast with your right hand, okay? So your right hand's gonna be out in front of you. Now with your uh, left hand, you're gonna come up and you're gonna bring it up right underneath your right hand, okay? And here's how this is gonna work. There's gonna be four different motions in here. The first one is, is we're gonna take that left hand and we're gonna come down and hit our left thigh, okay? The next motion is we're gonna bring a right hand back and bring it up like a, a, the back cast, okay? Perfect, that's the next motion there. Let's keep it just a little bit closer right in here, a little bit tighter, okay? Now we're gonna take that left hand and we're gonna bring it up and touch our right hand. Boom, that's the third motion right there, okay? Now we're gonna take that left hand and bring it down to our left hip and hit it. Every time you do this, make sure you hit and make a motion, okay? Now we're gonna go forward with the right hand as it is a forward cast to stop there. Now we're gonna take that left hand, left down, back, up, down, forward, up, down, back, up, down, forward, up, down, back, up, down, forward, up, down, back, up. Perfect. So as you can see there, this is a, not a very easy motion for anybody to figure out at any time. If we can slow this down and go nice and methodical, that translates into easier and smoother fly casting. Now what I always tell people in the double haul is the left hand leads the right. When you actually slow it down and you watch somebody cast, that's not necessarily true. But for this training exercise, I think it really shows you how important it is to move these hands the way that we do, all right? Left hand, left hand, left hand. All right, go ahead and set it down. Grimace face, good. Good, that was the, probably the first time you've actually double hauled. That was looking good. We'll work on your timing a little bit. I know it's hard to slow down in this wind. Let's take this next one half speed there, Lance. Work on your cast. Don't worry about the double hauling. Get a good rhythm and then we can start doing all those hauls. Good, left hand. Left hand, beautiful. Left hand, left hand leads the right. Really nice, buddy. Okay, so on this next one, what I want you to do is just, let's just get a good rhythm, okay? And I want you to keep that line elevated for five, 10 false casts, whatever feels comfortable, working on the things we did before. We're gonna open up our shoulder, we're gonna drift that right hand back, right? We're gonna come and deliver, not crossing our body right there on plane, we're gonna keep a nice easy punch, and we're just gonna get into a nice rhythm. And once you start feeling really a good rhythm and a comfort with that rod, start getting that left hand in there. But I want you to do it nice and smooth. I don't want you, you don't need to come all the way back here. You know, I think Lefty Craze says it's like, you know, five to seven inches. Now granted, I'll drift quite a bit more with that with my left hand, but just kind of make it just nice and easy and just keep in your mind, remember, the left hand leads the right. The left hand leads the right. Before the right can do anything, the left has to come up to the right, has to take that line of the left hands leading the right before we do anything, okay? Make sense? Yeah. Cool. Lance, let me stop you right there real quick. One thing that I'm watching on that video, and this is just, again, we wanna make really sure that we're practicing the right way. You have a tendency when you stop on that forward cast to not only deliver the fly down towards the water, which you didn't do on that one, but that is a problem that we've been seeing. So make sure that you're shooting to a spot, you know, three feet above where you're kind of aiming to allow that good turnover for a softer presentation. The other thing you have a tendency to do on that last one is to lay into it okay so just remember and I say it on my boat all the time to people stand proud in that cast and finish it off 
everybody wants to kind of get in there and put that last shot and kind of crouch down into it. Stand up proud in that cast and make sure that you're shooting that thing good. You're just having a tendency just to kind of let's give it just a little bit more, okay? And what that kind of equates to, I think, in casting is a soft deceleration in there. And so whatever load you've kind of built up ends up kind of dying in that cast. So make sure that all the time that we're standing proud in that cast the whole time, okay? Otherwise, it looks really good. starting to get back into some of those bad habits and getting a little bit sloppy in with your back cast and it's just really laying down flat and then sometimes you're kind of overcompensating about bringing it back in here. Remember, even though that we've opened this cast up, we've opened your shoulders up to the cast, you still have to come up here and I think maybe what happened is you hit that pole a couple times and so that got that. in your head and so now it's bringing it back in. It's not going to hurt anything and honestly, you probably shouldn't be shooting all the way over there. If you need to back up a step or two, I think we're fine there, just so that way it's not in your head anymore. But don't try to compensate not hitting that by doing something bad, okay? Higher. Better, buddy, better. Let's get that rod tip up a little higher in that back though, okay? Delivered to a spot three feet above the water, not to the water. Lance, a lot of times when we're correcting problems, we end up kind of creating some. Make sure that when you're trying to keep that rod tip elevated, remember a lot of it has to do with the angle of the cast. Some of it does have to do with the physical distance above the cast or above the ground, okay? So you're having a tendency sometimes to kind of drop it down. You're overcompensating by by lifting your arm in your cast. And so on that last one, you're way up here and that's just only gonna hurt your shoulder, right? So when that back cast comes back, let me show you real quick. When that thing comes back, you know, we're trying to keep this poking there. I'm sorry, I got caught in the grass there. So poking up there, keeping that thing elevated going forward. You're having a tendency to do two things. One, either coming too far back around behind and laying this thing flat. And so when we talked about that, your way to compensate for that was to bring this arm up here. Yeah. And so now you're doing something, you know, kind of kind of worse and weird and probably even worse on your shoulder there. So just keep in mind that in this instance, the higher the rod angle does have to do with the physical distance above the ground or the water, but you're still gonna come back and poke there before you shoot forward there. And let's give that a couple more and then we'll take just a five minute break because the rod is quite a bit heavier today. Cool, so when we're starting off with this short amount of line, you know, whenever you're on the boat, I like to think about, you know, having maybe not quite a uh, rod length of line out through the tip. Um, that makes it easy so we can kind of control it a little bit. Sometimes we have problems with that, you know, line getting stuck underneath the bow. So for right now, that's about what we're gonna do, have a little bit less than a rod length of fly line out, obviously more with the leader. It's important to know when we're talking about shooting line and casting the rod, that the forward cast and the back cast are, are pretty much the same thing. We can shoot line in the back cast the same way we do in the forward cast. When we're starting off with a short amount of line, trying to eliminate as many false casts as possible, I think it's important to shoot line on the back as it is on the front. So when I get started here, I allow this line to go out on the back and on the front, and then I start my hauls in there. So I'm just into that cast and that whole line within three false casts or less. You know, you really want to try to get it out there as soon as possible, but you also want to do it in a way that's going to present the fly well. So let's start off again, each and every time we're going to strip this whole thing in. We're going to start off with that shorter amount of line. And whenever you're ready, kind of put this fly out to the right side. Keep it in mind that you can shoot line in the back just like I did there. And then get this cast started, okay? And Lance, whenever you're ready, let's just, you know, same deal, all we wanna do is get that line moving and shoot in as few false casts as possible, but keep in mind every other technique that we've been working with.
Lance, this whole next cast, I only want you to shoot line in the back cast. One more false cast shooting line in the back and then go forward. I want everything to be shot back here. Even your, your forward shot, maybe only a foot or two on that very end one. Make sure you're shooting all your line in the back cast only. All right, great, so it's my last day here in Southern California with uh, Lance and Jennifer. We moved from the park to a casting pond to practice some of the skills we've been working on and apply them to more of a real world uh, situation. So we'll take turns. Is this like horse? Picking out one of the tarp, yeah, but it's tarpon. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna play tarpon. But what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna do it on a speed drill. Uh -oh. So I'll start off by picking one and then you pick one and then the first to get it, first to get the cast in the inside ring. Okay. Wins, wins, the, uh, wins the turn. Wins that turn and you get teeth. So if I remember correctly, you have a shot at, at getting it back or in this one, in the this first one, one, in, get, in this one the other person gets the, the first, teeth. The first, one to, the first one to put it in there, the other guy gets the teeth. Right, and... Uh, oh, so if you get the name, you're out. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I forgot yeah, how exactly. that other like, one yeah, was. Like, yeah, like playing like horse. All right, so uh, why don't you pick first? Uh, we're gonna do far right. You're gonna go to the blue one? Mm -hmm, blue one. All right, you start it. Okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, tin ring. Arr! <laughs> Ready? Go. <laughs> T.A. No, oh, no, no, no! <laughs> oh, oh, is that in there? <laughs> T to T.A. Oh, 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 come on! <laughs> all right, all right. T.A., T.A. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, you popped it in there. Oh, is that in? Oh, it was in. That was in. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I'm all the way to tarp. A lot of times people take for granted how you know, difficult some of the short shots can be. You still got to work with that timing, your back cast, and slow everything down and get a good turnover and you know present a good fly. Just because it's close doesn't mean that you have to go faster oh, no. or mess anything up. It's still the same basic fundamentals. Yeah. So. Ready? Yeah. Go. Nice! <laughs> Damn! <laughs> I just knew that that was going in, so I didn't even strip I didn't know. I'm glad you knew. Tarpo. Tarpo. Ta-ta. This is it. Damn. All the marbles. Ready? Go, Ready. blue. I think that's the first game of tarpon ever played. That was really fun, man. <laughs> Good job. That was great. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. It does. It does. It keeps you moving, and yeah. it's got more to it than just you know. And that's a little more, man. you know, cutting that speed. It's a little more real world. You know, I mean, it's you know, things happen fast when you're out there, and, and that pressure too. I mean, that's I mean, that's what we're doing when we're out there. You know, it's like hurry up and get it there, but get it there right. All right, guys. Well, I guess that wraps up our four days of casting. Hate to, uh, <laughs> hate to leave you guys back here in uh, California all by yourself, but um, it was so fun watching from the very beginning, um, starting off in the park and you coming from kind of a beginner to intermediate level and, and Jennifer, you never touching a, a fly rod before to you know care where we've gotten now and, and being able to have that video and, and working with you guys and seeing you know, you going from you know never touching a fly rod to now where you're you know shooting line every single time and feeling more confident, um, getting rid of some of that frustrations and, and Lance some of the stuff we saw where you know you were rocking uh, back and forth. Your your shoulder was really hurting you, and we were able to get in there and really kind of dissect that out of some of those videos. And then you know we've turned you into intermediate, you know, getting up to that kind of advanced. Uh, 
Faze, and thank you guys so much for hosting me. And it's been Thanks. really awesome to see how far you guys have come along. And I look forward to having thank you, you very much, back man. down on the boat in Florida. We'll be <laughs> it's a pleasure. All right, guys, look forward to doing it again okay. sometime. All right, take care.